and welcome to Table Ready Gaming. I'm Dave, and frankly, it's been a while since that we chatted. I've been under the weather and just really haven't had much of a voice. However, I'm always interested in continuing to grow Table Ready Gaming and the community. So this week, I reached out to three of my fellow YouTubers. Casey of eBay Miniature Rescues, Brent of Goobertown Hobbies, and Adam of Adam Paints. And I just made them an offer they couldn't refuse. Ah, oh, much better. If only, uh, Emergency actually worked that well and that wasn't some sort of tricky camera editing that did that, uh, little time lapse there. Truth be told, I have been under the weather, that's why there hasn't been much happening on this channel. I do apologize. That being said, this week I did reach out to Brent, Adam, and Casey to put together a little bit of a challenge for ourselves. See, there's an old white dwarf uh, a few years ago that had the deodorant speeder bike in it. And for the longest time, I always thought this would just kind of be a fun article to pull back out and try to see what I could do and put my own spin on it. So I contacted Adam, Brent, and Casey and asked them if they'd be interested in joining us in the project. Luckily for us, they all said yes, so if you haven't already, be sure to check out their channels and see what they've done on the project. Links to all their channels are down in the description below. So for the challenge, each of us picked a different faction that we wanted to make our deodorant speeder bike represent. I. Being a man of the common people, chose gene stealer cults, because at the end of the day, the common man is a very tasty snack, and I thought that would be a fun project to work on. So we decided that the only really rule to our contest was that you had to use a deodorant stick, and uh, everything else was just fair game. Now you might be thinking to yourself, Dave, I've never really seen any other 40k content on your channel. And uh, you'd be right. You might even be asking yourself, do you even play 40k? And uh, the truthful answer is no, I have not played a game of 40k in several editions now. However, one of my favorite RPG games of all time is Rogue Trader. Which is right here. I have probably played this RPG more than any other RPG out there. And personally, I'm really excited to see what Cubicle 7 does with the IP now that they own it. Great game system, strongly suggest checking it out. And at the end of the day, if my speeder bike is going to actually make it on the tabletop, it's probably going to be an encounter in one of these style games, not a game of 40k. But that being said, a buddy and I are working on some house rules to push some 40k miles around the table. So we'll see if that gets any legs. And in the spirit of the old White Dwarf article, uh, the majority of my speeder bike is just honestly trash I had laying around the house. It's like the old saying goes, one man's trash is another man's scratch building opportunity. So if you're ever wanting to like fill a 40k table up quickly, I gotta tell you, food containers and silver spray paint will get you some passable terrain very quickly for next to zero dollars. So always uh, hold on to your plastic food containers and uh, keep track of them because honestly, you can do some pretty cool stuff. Anyhow, enough rambling from me. Let's get down to the hobby bench and I'll show you what I did for this video. For this project, I know I needed a deodorant bottle as this was a requirement of the challenge. But I also settled on an old soap dispenser bottle and a pill bottle to make the weapon and the body of this vehicle. So I started this project by pulling apart the dispenser for the soap bottle. One added benefit of doing these trash scrap builds is that you start to appreciate the level of engineering that goes into everyday commonplace items that we all kind of take advantage of. For example, there was a very nice spring and two metal ball bearings in the soap dispenser. I never would have known that was there. It took a bit of effort and eventually I had to just cut the piece apart with a hacksaw and exacto blade. However, once the dispenser was apart, I was able to salvage some pretty interesting pieces that will make up the turret for this build. I then got to work on the deodorant stick. When you're working with packaging, the first thing I think you need to do is remove the obvious branding from the packaging. That means filing off the logos, scraping off the warming techs, or in this case, filling a turn arrow on the deodorant dispenser. To fill the gaps, I used Milliput, as it's what I had on hand. Personally, I would rather use some green stuff for this. I then glued the turn handle on the deodorant in place, and glued on the cap. I should also point out that for this project, this deodorant stick is empty, 
and has also been thoroughly washed before this project began. Next, I want to make a turret or cockpit. I really wasn't 100% sure how this build was going to look at this point, but I knew it was going to be a Gene Steeler Colt vehicle. So I imagine this isn't really a military vehicle, but perhaps some kind of mining vehicle that was designed to help remove valuable minerals from asteroids, and has now been repurposed to help remove Imperial officials from seats of power. So I wanted to keep some of those aspects of the Gene Steeler Colt vehicles from Games Workshop in mind, and they all seem to have a similar circular cockpits. For this, I decided to cut apart the lids of the pill bottle. At first, I tried to just glue the pill bottle on top of the deodorant stick, but the curve of the deodorant stick wasn't allowing for a clean bond. Also, the plastic used in this deodorant stick didn't want to bond with my super glue for some reason. So in the end, I just mixed up a big thing of milliput, made a giant milliput worm, and stuck the pill bottle on there. I then used my silicone modeling tools to smooth it into the deodorant bottle for a cleaner transition. While this was drying, I decided to work on the business end of the grav tank, and began to build the turret. I personally imagined this turret shoots some kind of cutting laser, and not shells. So I got to work on this gun by cutting down the soap dispenser's tube and gluing it into place. I also found this little bit of plastic in the dispenser, and I thought it made a really cool muzzle for the cannon. I'm not really sure how this weapon works, but hey, neither does the Mechanicum. And that's never stopped them. So I decided not to let it stop me, and I just press on. I then decided I needed another access hatch for my tank, and I took the top half of the pill bottle and sanded off the child's safety seal. So listen up, Copa, this channel and this pill bottle are no longer suited for children. I mean, I sure for one don't envy parents that are trying to raise kids in this very digital age, but just as a little sidebar here, I do hope people and politicians do realize that video games and tabletop gaming are an activity for adults and children, just like any other sport be it football, soccer, and so on. Both adults and children enjoy the hobby. That's the same here. And hey, if you are a minor and you're watching my content, love to have you. However, attaching it was becoming a struggle, and I probably would have had to use some milliput. By the end of the day, I just finally broke down and ran to my local game store. Right, so uh, let's just take a quick break from the tutorial. Uh, I'm gonna go get some green stuff because frankly, uh, I just know how that one works a little bit better than what we're doing here, I'm sure. But yeah, I figured I'd show you one of the cool reasons to be a gamer in Kansas City. Take you down to one of my friendly local game stores. Uh, oh. Sorry. So I needed a canopy for the back turret. I decided to make this by cutting the ping pong ball in half. I really do enjoy the bubble turret the final model has. Right, so back from my friendly local game store with green stuff in hand. I now took my green stuff and filled the gaps, attached my ping pong ball to the rear turret and then took a large glob of it and attached the barrel to the ping pong ball to make the turret. I then smoothed everything out with my sculpting tools, water, lubricant, and a little bit of sanding. At this point, I was very happy with how this model was coming out. I think it has a cool profile, and at this point, it's all essentially made of trash. Well now, it's time to gene stealer this bad boy up, so it's time to rummage through the old bits box. I started by adding a viewport from a Space Marine tank. There are just some bits I had sitting in the bottom of the box. And then I added a little rangefinder thing to the turret cannon. Oh, and because I purchased my deodorant in three packs, I had this cover from the new stick, and it fit perfectly into the front, so I'm going to use that as the grill. After that, it was back to the bits box to add a little headlight and some hatches. Then it was time to build the tank commander. Well, I used up all my gene sealer legs for a chaos cult I made for Necromunda. So I had to nab a pair of legs from a Dreamforge game Stormtrooper. I bought these guys a while back for a death pack guard army I made some years ago. <laughs> is it just me or is it ironic that we had to borrow someone else's pants to build a gene stealer? Anyhow, besides this small conversion, my tank commander was built from bits from the gene stealer troop box. 
I then added some small details from the bit box, mainly these sci-fi crates from Dreamforge support kit. I thought that these would be the vehicle's grav plates. Personally, I've always imagined Imperial designing grav vehicles as being super heavy and digging giant ruts in the ground as they just crush everything in front of them and smash anything they run over. Whereas an Eldar or Tal grav tank doesn't even rustle the grass as it flies over. I've also glued on some handles and this wired cord thing for extra detail. After that, the basing was pretty simple. I just drilled a hole in the bottom and inserted a cocktail stick, then glued it to a flat base. I then applied some Vallejo basing medium to it, and uh, whatever color the primer painted was pretty much the color it just stayed. In the end, I didn't even really paint the underside of this vehicle, because I guess I'm just a lazy wargamer sometimes. Anyhow, on to painting this model. My airbrush isn't up to par right now, and I've apparently rookied it pretty bad, I need some help fixing it. In fact, if you haven't been to eBay Miniature Rescue's channel yet, while you're there, be sure to ask Casey to make a video about airbrush maintenance. Cause... That guy's a spray booth sniper and does some amazing stuff with his airbrush, and I'm pretty sure he knows how to fix my problems. Anyhow, so I'm back to painting this guy with a brush. It's been a while since I painted a vehicle with a paintbrush, so don't do what I do, and this is hardly my best paint scheme, so I'm going to talk about the paint scheme in broad strokes. Get it? We're talking about painting? Broad strokes? <laughs> Anyhow, back to that. After I got the yellow down, I decided to paint some of the bits an off charcoal black gray. Again, I was pulling from Construction Crane as inspiration for this. I then decided that I needed some graffiti on it to mark it as a liberated machine. I kind of thought of the Vox Populi from Bioshock Infinite and decided to just streak some red paint across it and a nice slogan like, BREAK THE CHAINS down the side. I was intentionally going for a goopy mess paint as I wanted this part to look a little slapdash. I think if my airbrush was working, I could have had probably better luck by using the airbrush for all the official Imperial Guard like factory painting and then use a brush work for the slapdash work. I think in the future I'm going to be making a Gene Stealer Cult army because they just look like too much fun and I'll be exploring with that in future videos. So stay tuned! Then since I was kind of rushing through this entire paint scheme, I decided to hose the entire model down with a healthy coat of deviant mud. This makes the vehicle look extra grimy and dirty. I imagine Imperial Mining Planet isn't a very clean place. Well, there that model is, complete in its glory. Overall, this model was a lot of fun to work on, and I'm very excited to see what Brent, Casey, and Adam do with this challenge. Be sure to check out their channels in the description below. And if you're visiting for the first time from one of their channels, welcome to Table Ready Gaming. I'm Dave, and I'm kind of the new kid on the block here. But this channel is all about getting ready to run tabletop games. I focus on miniature painting lately, but I hope to be doing more terrain building and game design videos in the future. Casey, Brent, and Adam all do great work and I'm excited to see what they've done. Again, the links to their channels are down below. Anyhow, I'm Dave, this is Table Ready Gaming, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.